it. Oh, Vial goes down trying to make the pass. What a response. Chad Lawrence is going to win in Colorado. Welcome to the Tile 24 presented by NBC. I got my good buddy, um, Jace McAlpine on here. Um, thanks for coming on, Jace, and uh, all, all right, the sponsors. Man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, buddy. All this, all of our sponsors, Dunlop, Boxo, United Motorsports, Quad Lock. Um, you know, thank you guys for uh, for supporting the show. It's awesome. Our good friend Ricky Carmichael. He is uh, doing a little R and R, a little family vac vacation before uh, much needed. I'm sure. Exactly before things get ramped back up. So um, I called you in, Jace. So it's uh, it's nice to have you on. No, ple pleasure to be here, mate. Uh, you always you always answer the call when a nine time champ. Invite you to do the show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Jace um, is the creator of Gypsy Tales podcast. So really uh, long form, really, really cool stuff that uh, if you haven't seen any of them, um, some pretty heavy hitter athletes and influencers. Um, so get over to Gypsy Tales and and follow and watch those guys. So it's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, we're going to jump right into it, man. We just got done with uh, Colorado round three altitude um you know they had a i heard it was pretty warm uh what do you think of the track jace i i thought it was you know i'll just start i i, I thought it was a little dry what do you think yeah it was actually the literally the first topic that i wrote down on my pen and paper as well um i i feel like they're they're not prepping the tracks as deep it seems like from uh the first few rounds which i'm honestly a bit of a fan of um i think if you look at last year Parlor, for example, like if you just go apples to apples, Parlor um, last year was just a, a slot car track, you know, that they run the scoops there because they rip the start pretty deep. And it becomes one of those kind of racetracks where if you get the whole shot and you protect the inside line, it becomes very hard to pass because you're forced to, to kind of go to the outside, you know. So I think that I think they've got the tracks right in terms of the prep this year. Um, but Denver was surprisingly hard pack um and surprisingly shallow in the prep i think it made for some great racing i mean you know we'll fast forward in a bit but like justin cooper moto two two minutes to go and he's still in the lead um, mm -hmm. i don't know maybe there's a bit of a balance to find there maybe maybe they could rip some sections a bit deeper um just to have a bit more variety like i i'm i like the direction that they're going um yeah what what are your thoughts around it yeah i i agree um you know i always go back to you know um people you know on threads and 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 our 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 fans that critique every every movement that you know either athletes or tracks or or promoters make you know that's our sport um it's something we got to deal with but i i do think that you know speed's always the killer in my eyes mm. right so the, the faster the track is when you do go down um you tend you tend to uh you know you hit the ground harder so to your point i i like um i like to have the track open and fast in certain areas but i do think um ripping it deeper getting um way more technical slower sections maybe not the entire thing so it rate yeah. still races good but you see the strengths of you know the technique really come out like uh i felt like colorado Yes, you have to have good technique. Um, you got to be fast. You got to be smart. But it also came down to who was really wanting to just hang it out and ride mm. those outsides, um, you know. And 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 like I said, it turned out to be a, a great racing surface. But I would like to see a little bit more. Um, I saw. I think uh, like all three so far: Paula, Hangtown, Colorado. Um, they have been a bit, uh, a, definitely a bit harder, not as ruddy. Uh, we do get better racing in some of those spots. So I, I do like that, but I also like to see the really technical stuff, you know, where, where speeds are slower, where big mistakes could happen and you just more fall over or, you know, you, you, uh, you know, you really have to be on your toes when it's, when it's super gnarly and technical. Yeah. And I think the, I mean, the first 450 moto, especially going first too, I mean, yeah. it was a send fest dude. Like you could really see, how fast i think we had like basha was up there anderson yep. was up there uh yeah chase up there ap was up there like we had a lot of the the heavy hitters really sending it early um so yeah i mean i definitely i like that i loved getting to see the boys kind of let it eat um but 
yeah, I mean, there was there was probably a couple sections where I wish it had that Thunder Valley, you know, like that trademark mm. Thunder Valley. So it, let's say they change the prep a little bit and they rip a few sections deeper. On that track specifically, what sections would you want to see get that uh, gnarly technical rutted vibe? So I think I, I would slow down the, the I would have slowed down um, the areas and ripped the areas that were a bit slower. So I think that big triple step up as um, I'll reference chance. Cause I think, I think he was probably, he did it the best that double into the um, into that little, into a right hander. And then it had some rollers coming out of it. It's kind of the middle part of the track. And then you'd come down that um, kind of, kind of coming towards mechanics area, like three turns from mechanics yeah, area. Yeah. It was like that technical, double where you had to d step up and then land in, in, uh, in a rut. I mean, dude, he was, he ch by far chance, I think did that the best out of anybody, but just that intersection and some of the sections where you really had to, um, you know, pick and choose your lines. And I think coming down some of the Hills too, maybe, maybe even coming down from the very top where they had the Thunder yeah. Valley sign, like if that would have been, you know, six, eight different lines coming down into that. Cause that's a little bit of a tighter section really, uh, making guys choose where they want to go. You know, like a lot of guys were just going outside. Yes, there was an inside line. I think uh, Tom fell. Yeah, Tom made a great, yeah, Tom made a great pass on there, Yeah, Yeah, Jalik, um, I think twice on Jalik there, but then one of the times he also fell there. Um, so like into that turn there, um, I feel like having just some more options, um, but then keeping some of the other stuff open, you know, like mechanics area open over that inside single where Chase had went down and things like that, like that, that I like the fast section in, in those parts of the track, but uh, nonetheless, it was a, it was, it was a great racing surface. It promoted racing. Um, the one thing I will say is it's at least from TV's perspective is it doesn't look like it's getting very, rough what do you rough, think i mean yeah. i know it's choppy but it's not super rough yeah no and i mean you look at like hangtown last weekend not super rough i mean i definitely think parlor was was rough for sure um i think that's probably like a good mix but i mean then you really didn't see that much um that much passing but yeah i definitely think that it's nowhere near as rough as I guess you would kind of expect the, the mm -hmm. outdoors to, to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, those are all, that's all good insight. We're going to jump right into the United Motorsports moment of the week. Um, we actually have, we're going to, we're going to, uh, what do we have? A through A through J is what we kind of going to go through here. Um, Jet massive comeback from his, um, from his massive get off uh, at, at Hangtown. Still, still banged up, but was able to uh, re have have one hell of a rebound race with uh, with Hunter, and uh, you know he's he's definitely back in this championship fight. Um, you know he he rode well, he made the passes, made the moves that he needed to do, rode smart. Um, you know, there's a lot of racing left in this series. What did you see from Jet, Jace? I mean, yeah, it was a, a huge weekend for for Jet. I mean, I think to talk about Jet this weekend, we've probably got to talk about Sexton. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, like I think that this was a, a weekend where it feels like the whole championship almost felt was hanging in the balance. You know, like mm. this was the first time in over a year where we saw Jet make this kind of mistake, especially outdoors, you know. And, I mean, he shed a bunch of points, shed the lead. Then Sexton has one of the best rides ever. I mean, just yep. a one-moto format ride, you know. Um, <laughs> and then you – that puts Jet in this weird position this week, right, where it's like, dude, how good was Sexton? Like, I have no reference point of where I was at compared to his – moto two speed you know and i feel like this weekend sexton really dropped the ball and almost let jet off the hook you know because mm -hmm. now you now if you're jet you just go like oh yeah i mean that was just that was just a bad weekend for me we're watching sexton's crash uh, was yeah. that in moto one i think or i moto think two? so yeah before that big uphill triple he he came out we're watching replay right here and he just gets kicked and then he hits this big rut on the wall there you can see the big poof of dust yeah, and uh, just goes down. 
Yeah, so I think, I mean, for me, like, Jet was flawless this this weekend and did exactly what he needed to do. And I think, so, like, the second moto, he passed Cooper with two minutes to go. So extremely patient ride, um, and that's a kind of injured ride, you know. So this here, huge moment, like, again, <laughs> like, that's a massive crash. So Sexton's had two big ones on the day. But, like, this could have changed everything, you know, like another kind of hero second moto ride that almost could have put a bit of a nail in in the momentum for Jet. But instead, everything just swung completely the other way. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, definitely, it was it, – it, he definitely made a huge mistake this weekend. He needed to keep the ball rolling from, uh, from Hangtown. He wasn't able to do that. Um, that crash that we just watched, Aaron, why don't you run that again? Um, right after mechanics area. Dude, look he, at uh, how on the gas he is when he lands here. His front he, wheel does not touch the ground. Yeah, he's just coming in super hot. I, you know, I, we actually, I talked about that last night a little bit with somebody and and I felt like they may have come together in the end, but I just felt like when Chase came in here, he had the bike too far on a lean once he left yeah. that little that little jump and he did more of the tires on the ground right here. As he took off, he needed more of the tires square on the ground if he, yeah. if he had any chance of, of, uh, you know, number one, keeping it on the track. So you could, so you could use his, use the brakes. Um, but also not doing what he did, you know, having the tire only catching like two or three knobs on, on the side with that much speed with, um, you know, with that much angle, uh, you know, that was, that was pretty, pretty aggressive, you know, and, and the track also didn't have that tacky feel. Like I watched, mm -hmm. I watched race day live. I was able to watch the, 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 the races. Everybody was fighting for, for a little bit of traction, either front tire or rear tire, especially under acceleration. You could see the bikes moving around a lot. Um, you know, we're going to, we're actually going to call this one, the box up breakdown for, for chase Sexton right now, since we're really diving into, you know, the, the mechanics of, of kind of what happened and, what uh the big mistake that that was made mistakes that were made i should say because it, he he had like you said he had jet question maybe not questioning but like he he had one that performance in that in, in at hangtown was was so good um he, he left every one of us myself included probably mm. you too jace like yeah. where did this come from where where did where did um, chase pull this out of because i had never seen him ride on the edge like he did um and and also keep it and together looks good. like it yeah. looks good you know it it reminded me of um you, you look at like he's got the ktm working in that way that produced like a jeffrey hurlings type ride you know like mm. there were the, the years when jeff was doing amazing in the mxgp on the ktm and it just looked like he could push the bike so hard and it was so compliant you know and and i think you would look at maybe you felt like this at times in your career riding like a an aluminum chassis where you're you were looking at that being like man i wish i could get like this kind of chassis to handle um the way that hurlings or dunge or whatever so it's mm -hmm. like in my head i'm like man maybe he found that setting that let hurlings be so comfortable and let Dungey be so comfortable. Like maybe he found why he went to KTM in that ride, you know? And I just mm. think it was so important to put that level of doubt in everyone's mind and a, a good performance at Colorado uh, almost solidifies that, you know? And it's like to be jet, like he's never had doubt in his mind at all on a 450. I feel like that weekend would have been like the first weekend to put a bit of that doubt there. Totally. He needed to stamp it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I loved the performance that he put in. I said this on last week's show too. Chase needed that. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen Chase ride that close to the edge. Um, also keep it all together. You know, he was it doing never everything looked right. Like it was, and never looked like it was sketchy, like really pushing and really letting the bike do its thing, but it never looked sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> that was this coming into Colorado after that Hangtown ride. This that was a this that was a that was a time to put a stamp on it and and make the questions that we all had probably with Jet too. Like where did that come from? Solidify itself. Well, it didn't happen because of because of his two massive mistakes and and uh, just didn't really show up. You know. So um, he's he definitely has to 
you know, I guess regroup, figure out, you know, how can he pull that out of himself again? But as we, as we go, this is kind of a, it is a, a track record of what we see of Chase, right? Like he'll put it's in a theme. couple stellar rides. Yep. It's the same theme, same. It's like this, we've seen this movie before where it's, he puts in a couple stellar rides and he, and he surprises all of us. And then we see what we saw at, uh, at Colorado, <clears throat> that big mistake. Um, you can't have that with, with, especially with this field, right? Like, you have Jet um, being in the position that he's in after a huge mistake um, at uh, at Hangtown, and then it, we're going to move right quick right on to Hunter Lawrence establishing mm. himself as number one now, the points leader. Um, you know, didn't get the overall, but he but he's now red plate holder. Um, he rode also phenomenal, unbelievable. Um, yeah, and I really feel like he, you know the building blocks it's definitely taken him he did the same thing in the 250 class right where he had some 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 good rides showed potential and it dealt with some injuries dealt with some crashes um and now we're really seeing that's the beauty of outdoors too you have two motos they're 35 mm -hmm. minutes a piece you really can kind of find yourself a bit more um you know uh especially on this 450 when you have two gate drops when you have 35 minutes you have those time that the time to work out kind of all the chinks in the armor <clears throat> and that's exactly what i think we're seeing from from hunter yeah and i think first of all to the bike looked way better from they said, both yep. jet and hunter this weekend and i think uh being on track like i was watching trackside at, at parlor um and i mean granted when you're trackside you can't really see the race unfold as good uh, but you can definitely see bike setup and i mean i think jet being like the bigger stronger guy i think you were able to see him like it looked like he was really holding the rear down on his motors, like physically putting so much force through the, the rear end of the bike. And it just looked like Hunter didn't have that same level of, of strength under him, like all the way through those motos. And then I think you didn't see those guys super comfortable at Hangtown, obviously. Uh, and then back to the 2023 setting this week and just instantly like, I think Colorado being that it wasn't super deep and it, it was like you said, they were searching for traction a lot, just having a bike that felt good with any kind of lean angle. I think that almost looked like the critical thing this weekend. And it just looked like Hunter was completely comfortable leaning over that bike without a bunch of traction. Um, and like you said, the results are there, like the compounding of the week in week out being there. Um, I mean, he, he honestly looked fantastic. Like that first moto before the mechanics area, the single onto that straightaway, like the amount of like spunk that he had moving the bike lap after lap, like the, just the way he was hitting that, like Hunter was definitely there to play this weekend. Yeah. <clears throat> well, they said that, you know, I think um, they said that on the broadcast, they went back to the drawing to the board. 2023 setting, I think. Yeah. Some 2023 parts and settings. Um, I think they felt like uh, the bike just had a little more pop, a little more uh, forgiveness to it. It definitely looked like both of those jet and Hunter um, rode the bikes better with the, uh, with those parts, whatever the actual major change was. Um, you know, I think they had scrambled a little bit, right? Like, cause they had ordered a bunch of new parts, um, from, for this 22, 2024 model that obviously they weren't running. So when they went back to the drawing board and, and put that stuff back in there from 23, now it's a little bit of a, a scramble. Cause obviously they want their practice bikes and their race bikes, yeah, and yeah, yeah, everything yeah. else to have the same, same parts and same feelings. So um, you know, it's, they'll get it done. It's a, it's a factory team. I get it, but it might, it might take them a week or two to, to, to get every one of their motorcycles, um, exactly the same, you know, they'll pr potentially just run, um, those settings on the weekends. I've had to do that before. Like, Hey, we got to wait a week and a half or two weeks before we get more of these parts. Hmm. Um, but you'll have the good stuff on the weekend and as, as a racer and at that caliber, that is okay. Like, yes, it's not the same stuff we're riding during the week but it's close enough. Um, and like we've always said, the work, the work gets put in during the off season. Um, it's maintaining what we have during, during the season. Um, so we'll see. I think that the, definitely the, the, like you said, the bike, the bikes worked better for both 
both the boys out there. And that was a critical, critical track, like you said, because of traction, because you're never going straight very often. You know, there's a <laughs> yeah. lot, you're always turning, you're always on a lean. On a lane, um, yeah. Yeah. So when you're on a lean like that, uh, there's a lot of feedback that comes up through the through the chassis, through the bars, either from the rear or the front too. Like um, if you don't have the right setup on a track that you're you're always on a lean a lot. Um, you know, you're not putting all that force directly through the wheels up into the suspension because you're on a lean. Yeah. Um, so definitely it makes it a, it makes it a tough motorcycle to ride when, when it's off, but the boys, they weren't off this weekend. Uh, have you, uh, have you actually been in a situation where jet is in where you won a championship and the bike has stayed basically the same, but there's new components coming through every year. Have you ever been in a situation where you've actually gone back to a championship winning setting? Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, here we are looking at 450 points. Give me one second, Jake. 450 points, season points. we got Hunter Lawrence with 129. Chase says That's so Sexton. wild that Hunter's winning. <laughs> right? Six down for Chase. And we have Jet with 16 down. Um, made up a bunch of critical points on Chase, which which kind of leave, leaving from Hangtown was – was uh was the leader and the guy that we we uh that that in my eyes that jet had to make up a lot of points on um and he's done that now he's within 10 um and now he's got his brother leading uh justin cooper also 20 down aaron pleasure yeah. 29 you know so in my opinion i know we're only three rounds in but when you're sitting around the 32 point like uh, my deficit of 32 with like uh, jason anderson not that it's not over but uh that's beginning, that's getting off. a lot of points at at a range there, you know. So, um, but yes, to your point, I I I have I've gone and and thought we picked the right setting during the week um, or or parts coming into a season, and then find out when we get to a race and we, we race the race conditions, um, all the nerves that the racing the races bring, the development of the track, things like that. Like yes, I have made the wrong decision and uh call it the wrong decision and decided to go back i have in the past um changed shock springs in between main events um looking for something like i, I did that at a supercross race one time where i was like hey man i'm struggling so much i'd rather run what i know even though if it's way too soft um and we've done that we've 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 totally revamped our setup in between motos um, multiple times. And those are the things you have to, you have to do as, as a rider, you have to put your trust mm. and your, and, uh, and, 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 and lean on the team because that's what they're there for. We're not the engineers. We tell them what we think or what we, what we want. And they're the ones that are supposed to go back to the drawing board and figure out how they can execute that and give the rider what they want. Um, and the, and the great thing about having Hunter and jet both yeah. phenomenal riders and, you know, uh, I've heard from Dazzy like Jet's feel on the motorcycle is 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 some of the best, and and then Hunter can back it up and bring out a whole another um, you know uh, points that so they're they're attacking it from both angles, so they're able to make quick work of 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 a of a bad situation um, yeah. along with their team. You know, having the team like I think uh, Hunter had said Hutch flew out to Florida, they did some testing this week, and you have to be able to in our racing, you have to be able to execute and you have to be able to move very fast because we've yeah. raced so many races in a row. You know, we don't have the time to be like, Oh yeah, we'll get those parts in, you know, uh, 30 days. Well, dude, four races are going to go by, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it, you got to be able to make quick work. And I think that's what they're doing. So, um, well, I love to that, um, to, at least to my knowledge, they're on a very similar setting and I mm -hmm. love, uh, I would say that that's come from Dazzy from a very young yeah. age to be like, no boys, we're going to get this to where you're both in the window. Because if you've got two dudes on completely different setups, you know, oh, I like this, I like that. And you kind of let them deviate. Like imagine the nightmare that that creates versus the, um, having so much data, like you literally have twice the amount of data. And then again, confirmation, blind confirmation. Like as far as testing goes, I mean, I actually don't think that the sport has caught up to the advantages that these guys have yet. You know, like we're mm. seeing one and two in the sport right now in terms of the championship that we're in. And they, um, you know, it's two brothers from Australia that 
they got the same bike, the same testing that dad, like they just have so many advantages. And I think we're kind of starting to see it a bit now. Yeah, no, they definitely have, uh, they definitely have um, one up on everybody being on very similar setups. I have, you know, Jake Weimer, I can go back to my teammate, Jake Weimer, like our setups were completely different. Yeah. Um, you know, where there's certain key parts that we could rely on each other to, to, to back up like what we are, what we were feeling. But when it came down to really like fine tuning the motorcycle, um, we were on our own, you know, we really were on our own on, on what we liked, what, what I liked first, what he liked. So it definitely, you know, you can get yourself down a rabbit hole and chase after certain things um, that you may not, that, that may not end up working. So by having those mm. two on the same team, having Dazzy, having, having all the team Honda crew, um, you know, all on the same page. And I think that's what Dazzy does really well. Yeah. Dazzy makes sure that everybody is, you know, they're all pushing for the same goal. They're all pushing and, and looking to, to improve um, as a team. And, uh, and whatever Hunter comes up with, Jet gets a ride jet comes up with hunter gets to ride so um they have they have one one program that's going to be very hard to beat i can promise you that yeah and I, and I think yeah just this weekend i think was a really good example of just the level that that those two boys are on you know like obviously jet not 100 percent didn't win the races by you know or the second moto by a huge margin um and then hunter i mean he's what five motos into his 450 career and gets a win but yeah, just, I, I think we, we're just expecting that this is something that he should be doing. But like when you break down the reality of like your fifth 450 moto ever, you get a win. I mean, he's he's crushing it. He is. He is. He is doing really well. He's doing phenomenal. So that brings us on to Chase Sexton's falters following Hangtown Heroics. And uh, like we, you know, we, we kind of t touched on that. But we're going to touch on it some more. We're going to get those replays up for, for the fans that are watching on YouTube. And, and uh, yeah, just he, he needed to show up as we're watching a replay right here. Moto one crash before the triple step up. Um, big triple step what, up. What do you that think? Was, what do you think that was? Was that just some like the a weird kind of rebound out of the corner, popped him out of the rut, bit of an in swinger? Yeah, exactly. Like well, let's let's run that Hector. Let's run that uh, replay right here at the top of the hill here, right here. He gets a kick. Right, it's coming up. Right, right there. He gets kicked yeah. inward. The bike kicks inward, and then he has to fade out into that bit. You know that that rut that that I guess, essentially berm rut that he ends up hitting right here yep. is probably two feet tall right so then it throws them off balance and and uh and ends up off the track there and off off into the kind of water truck lane where all that dust big cloud of dust was where he where he ended up crashing and um just uh not aware of and here's crash number two um passive mechanics area putting the move on jay coop comes up was this top just there, was that just impatient <sighs> You know, yeah, I think he was definitely too a little too far behind. He made something happen um, that, dude. Look at the speed. Like I said, even if he wouldn't have landed on the edge of his tire, he was going to have a, a hell of a time keeping that bike motorcycle on the track. Um, the, the the speed was so high, and that's kind of what we talked about the, the 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 track developing. You know, which is it, which. Like I said, it gave us a lot of things to talk about. It made some for some good passing points too, but if that would have been super ruddy, typical, um, Colorado, he wouldn't have been able to just send it in there. So, um, I just think he pushed it a little too hard was on too too leaned. The bike was too far leaned over. Didn't catch enough of the, the, the treads on the tire, um, square, square, you know, laying that tire square on the ground. He was leaned over right here is where he should have stood it up, but he kept it leaned over. And then, uh, you know, with that amount of speed, it basically just kind of popped him popped him up his tires were back off the ground again uh because mm. of he was so far on a lean and and um yeah just he's lucky that berm was out there that caught him you know and it didn't it didn't end up worse but you know giving up too many points like you can't make those mistakes in this field um especially on round three uh and, and that was like we talked about that was was chase's time to stamp um and secure and let everybody know that that hangtown wasn't a fluke um mm. but it didn't happen <laughs> yeah and i mean even for him you know like not even just for jet like i think it's so hard to get jet's feet to the fire 
you know, and, and you, you had it there. But I think Jet probably has enough history in, in his own, or like he has his own data for his own history to know that he's going to be good. But for Chase, you know, like even to have that belief in himself that it wasn't random, I'm that guy, I can deliver this week in and week out. I almost think it just kind of makes the the Hangtown ride just like a kind of novelty at this point, you know? And it's like, well, freak, that was dope. Like that's one for the that's one for the pool room and I'll talk about forever. But you know, back business as usual this weekend, Jet getting the win. I think to to what you just said was uh to solidify it for Chase himself more than even yeah. Jet. Yeah, like putting Jet's feet to the fire. That's what you, you have to do. Um and you got to put pressure on him. But I think also with Chase and his mentality and the things that he's dealt with and changing to a new team and a new bike and all of that. Like, I think that would have been more confidence for Chase yeah. than even putting Jet's feet to the fire and keeping the pressure on, letting Chase know and getting him to believe in himself. Not that he doesn't, I, I'm not saying that he doesn't, but I, but I feel like that would have definitely the trajectory of Chase would have that would have kept going. I feel like if he could have solidified what he did at Hangtown there at Colorado, and I'm not saying going one one, but the way he started off that moto and and uh, you know going down, it's just it's it 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 tends to happen too much. That's the problem. Um, and if you're going to race these guys for a championship, as we saw in Supercross, like you can't give up that many points, and we can't be giving up these points now. Um, he's got to keep. Keep uh, keep the pressure on. Number one for Jet, but also for himself, so that you know he believes. You like right now we're looking at points one twenty nine for Hunter Lawrence, Chase Sexton sixteen down, uh, or sorry, uh, Chase Sexton six down, Jet Lawrence sixteen down, Justin Cooper twenty, Aaron Plesher under twenty nine. So um, before you know it, we're going to be seeing point spreads of 30, 35, 40, and and a, a total of two motos. And to come down, if if you get over the twenty five. Um, as a as a racer, as a guy that's been in that position, mm. when you start getting twenty five points or more down, that's really hard to claw your way back from. Um, when you start going over close to two motos, you know that essentially makes your whole race series one 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 race shorter. If you're up in yeah. if you see the 50, 50 point mark, right? So um, it's no longer an eleven race series; it becomes a ten race series. Um, and as this thing gets into the into the uh, middle of the race season, and then we close down towards the end, if we have those point spreads, now your only option is is a bike failure from from mm -hmm. your competitor or a massive crash like we saw from Jet at at Hangtown. Um, and those that's not really the place that it's not a place I like to be. I know that's not a place that any one of these racers like to be, um, based on essentially luck. You know what what what's going what's going to happen or what could happen. Um, because no matter what, if you go out and win out, um, that's a lot of points to make up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I mean, it's gotta be hard. Like the, the, the position that chase is in, right. Because supercross, we just didn't see speed. Like he didn't have the speed that he had in the past, but he didn't have the crashes. And then in outdoors, we're seeing speed again, but then the crashes are come back. So yeah. it's a it's definitely a tough, uh, I could see it just being a tough position for that camp to be in, you know, and, and that being a, a difficult balance to, to try and find while you've got two dudes at the front of the field that seem extremely dialed. Yep. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So let's move on to Justin Cooper. Um, I've said this in the past, man, he, he, he says he, he has inserted himself as, as a contender in this 450 class, two great starts, um, on the day at Colorado. And, you know, the one that really stuck out to me, you mentioned it, Jace was moto two. I think he, what he led all the way to about two minutes to go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the kid has flown under the radar and I said this in Supercross too. um, you know, right there, anywhere from third through eighth, uh, a, a lot of times. And and now what we're seeing is is he, he's got the speed. Um, the consistency is there. He doesn't do anything special. Like, it's not like he's, you know, he's one of these riders that you're like, wow, that's just amazing. But the speed was there this weekend. He actually pulled a pretty big gap on these boys. Yeah, uh, in the first one. Yeah, most of the race, right? So, um, the Yamaha 450 looked like it was working good. 
you know, I, I will say that uh, uh, another rookie, right, in the 450 class, establishing his, uh, establishing himself uh, as a contender, uh, very tough race at altitude. Um, I know the temps were, were they weren't, you know, extremely hot, but you add the, you know, an 85, 90 degree weather along with Just some altitude. Being, yeah, being being in that altitude, um, you know, he just didn't have it at the end. But what I saw was was we have some good things to come from from Jay Coop. You know, he rode phenomenal. Yeah, completely agree. And doing it at a time when he kind of needs to, you know, like he's got the whole Star Yamaha team on his back, really. Like obviously Coop Coop's out, um, and Eli is out. He's fighting for a ride. So, I mean, I like as well that he's delivering when he really needs to deliver and on a bunch of different levels. He's not just for himself. Like he's, he's honestly being like a company man at the moment for, for those guys. And you said he doesn't do anything special. He doesn't, but he starts very special. I was going to so, say, okay, you're right. Yeah. His starts are special. He's, he, he is, yeah. I mean, on a, on a, if you were to look at averages, he's probably one of the if not the best, one of the best starters um, from the 250 class up to the 450 class now. Yeah, um, that is what he does special. You you are correct there. He he uh, he starts well, and as you know, putting yourself up front in a class like this is it makes your life so much easier. Um, well, you know, and, and you yeah. got to think, you got to think. I mean, and this is me from my amateur racing days of being terrible. Like I never wanted the whole <laughs> shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like to be him in this class and, you know, he probably knows he doesn't have a full 30 in him right now. I mean, as a racer, I'm assuming you'd know exactly yeah. what you've got. He yeah. probably knows he doesn't have a full 30, but he is still out there and fighting for those starts. So I think, I think mentally that's actually like a really – good sign that he really wants to to be up front but he probably weighs 150 145 pounds he's on a star yamaha at altitude uphill start i mean that was a green light for, for two whole shots for him and he executed yeah he did he did and and and, and the speed like you know well, well we keep talking about starts but speed was there he had he had the speed so i think from the confidence standpoint from from what what's to come you know I can tell you that he, he probably, you know, is looking at, yeah, like, yes, I did get tired. He said it on the podium that, that he, he was just mm. gassed at the end. Um, but we're headed out to high point. Um, you know, we'd have no more altitude races. So my point is, is if they keep, uh, prepping and the, the tracks develop the way they have been developing, yeah, you gotta know good. from a, from a con confidence standpoint that like, dude, one of these times, um, if I put myself in the right position, and we're call it at sea level and, and I ride like I rode at Colorado, I should be able to get a, a, a you know, maybe an overall, but if not a moto win, a like moto I feel like for sure. if that, if Colorado would have been sea level, let's just say it, if it would have, which it's, I know it's not, it's, it's hypothetical, but if that would have been sea level, I don't think those, those dudes would have tracked them down with two to go. I think he would have been able to have the steam and the fitness to run that thing out um, and, and get a moto win. I think he would have, uh, because I can promise you that uh, every time that we went to Colorado, no matter how fit I was, that was one of the hardest races. Yeah. You, you, you felt it when, when, when you left there, you know, it's kind of like Southwick Southwick's another one that no matter how fit you are, depending on the temperature, the track just gets so gnarly that it, no, you know, you, you're going to get tired. It's just who gets who, who can, who can push through that tired feel, um, in, in, in the lactic acid in your muscles and things like that. And, and, uh, being that he is a rookie, um, and he's, and he's what got, mm. what'd you say? Five, five or six, six, uh, six motos now. Yeah, yeah. Six motos under his belt. Like I only, I only, I only see better things to come from him. Honestly. Yeah. Before we, before we move on to two fifties, I thought it was cool. Like you see him at the press conference and it's literally 2022 podium. Like I feel, I feel like I, I can't remember who won at Lakewood in 2022 in the two fifty class, but I've got a feeling that was probably the podium. So yeah. like fast forward two years later and you've got, you know, just, just from two years ago, you've got an all two fifty podium, which, uh, that was also kind of cool to, to see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. It was it was a one, one hell of a ride from from Jay Coop. So we're gonna head on to move on to Hayden Deegan, um, solidified himself as the boss in the in the two fifty class once again. Um, 
you know, he, he, he rode phenomenal. He's, he's answered all of the fans and the haters questions. Is he, is he here for the long haul? You know, uh, what I'm seeing is yes, he is. I mean, there's not right now the, the, the sheer, you know, grit determination, the, the, the way he rides the tracks, um, right now, these guys, he's got, he's got the rest of the field on, on, on their heels and they, and they need to do something about it because here very shortly, it's going to be out of touch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, like he's just got the starts figured out. You know, mm-hmm. I think, I think even if you go back to, to last year, like I, I think when it was all said and done, when the motos were over, like he looked very consistent, but I think starts were extremely un, uh, inconsistent for him last mm-hmm. year. Um, and the fact that we've gone six motos into the year now, and I mean, he's had a top, you know, I think Hangtown, the first moto maybe might be his worst start charged through to win that one. Um, but the fact that he's got the starts this figured out this early into the championship and Salt Lake city, two whole shots, uh, basically. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that the rest of the field is definitely in the danger zone right now. Like the danger zone is him full of confidence on a great bike, getting good starts every single weekend. It is, it is. It, and they, they, like I said, they have to make, um, some quick moves. Uh, Hector, if we can pull up the points really quick, I'll, I'll uh, explain more on why I say that. Um, you know, we got mm. Hayden Deegan with 144 and chance almost a moto. Uh, we're almost a moto already. Levi, right? His his main call it main competitor coming in um from Supercross, you know, and and what you know, we 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 got him Levi sitting with with uh, down 25, right? So he's already at a, a whole race down um Tom Bial with t- down 23 and chance down 23. And then it, it literally goes down to Joe Shimoda with um, almost a two point race lead. Um, he's down yeah, 45. Yeah. So, yeah. um, like I was taught, like I was saying that, uh, you know, we're only lot round three. And if you have these, this point spread, keep building like we are, you're going to get to the middle of the season and you're going to, he's going to have a, you know, a, a, a 30, 35, 40 point lead. Um, and, and how do you make that up? You can't. You, you you can't make that up without without him making a massive yeah, mistake the balls or a bike cool problem. Then. The, yeah. Exactly. So I, as a racer, I don't like to see. I, I wouldn't want to be in that position. Um, to your point, he's got he's got great starts. Um, he's also quick, um, if not the quickest most of the time. But I think the big difference is is when you see that clock flip over to about twenty five minutes, and you know you got about six to seven minutes left in the in these motos he doesn't falter there his his speed his intensity stays till the checkered flag flies and that is is what um that is what has carried him um i think up until this point that he is substantially better than 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 the rest of the competitors in the 250 classes is liter- is literally that 8 minutes to go you know there's mm. no falter in speed and fitness Um, the kid knows how to dig. So, uh, you know, and it's, you don't see that very often, right. From, from a 250 guy, this is more of an experienced, you know, 450 feel, um, from a rider that can just dig and push and, and put himself in that hurt locker for, for, you know, at the 10 whole minutes, you know, to finish off that moto, that's kind of when, you know, I can tell you what I would try to do. Yeah. What I could tell you what I would try to do is get the biggest gap I could get. And then I could manage the race by watching Dunge where he's at, you know, if he is two or three tenths quicker, well, I got a 10 or 15 second lead. I'm managing my race that way where, um, you know, you don't really have that option in the lights class. We haven't seen yet. I mean, I'm, I'm, it will probably come, it will probably where he's got a big lead and he manages his race and it's, it just looks easy, but it hasn't been that way up until this point. Um, and I just think he's got the guys on, on their heels when it comes to that last 10 minutes of the moto. Yeah. And I think it was a, a huge statement from him, he was behind Tom Bial with two minutes to go in that first moto. So he's had the crash, he's picked himself back up. Uh, and like, this is the pass that he made, which, you know, so he was pretty leaned over there. Like if mm. I'm, I'd love to see Sexton's versus that because that lean angle that you spoke of that kind of hurt Sexton, Diggs yep. is actually able 
to uh to pull that off like he hit the top of that and he slid um it looks like he just stayed a little bit more centered over the the bike it looks like chase kind of dipped on to the inside of the yeah. of the motorcycle um mm. which obviously like exacerbated the lean uh angle that he had but yeah i mean like crazy statement to just I mean, we know that a second's as good as a first in outdoors, right? <laughs> not, yeah. not to him. He was just like, nah, bro, I'm getting the dub. <laughs> yeah, and every point counts, right? Yeah, in, in outdoors, because of the two-moto format, because you can end up with the overall, that's all great, the bonus money. But uh, that was a point right there, right there that he, he, you know, made up some, you know, every position is worth either one point or or more, you know, up to, up to – in between first and second, it's three points, right? So, yeah. um, you know, that's why we see our points where we where we see the you know the, the second and third down at twenty minus twenty three. They're down twenty three points. You know, with Hayden with sitting one forty four, Chance sitting you know twenty three down, and Tom sitting twenty three down. So, and Tom being a main competitor, I said this coming into the season into outdoors that Tom, because of his past experiences, because of he's a he's a two time MXGP world champ in the two fifty class, that he would be in this fight and he would be a guy that uh is going to be in this championship fight till the end but like we just saw he's sitting 23 23 down that's a lot of uh a lot of headwind a lot of headway to make um as we sit only you know at round three so the boys are gonna have to do some uh quick thinking you know i know i know we have high point coming up and and then i believe there's a weekend off um you know, see if they can get back and develop some 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 better stuff or find some speed. Whatever they need to do, they need to find something because the train's leaving the station, that's for sure. When did – did you have like a, a shift in your – maybe hard for you because you just want everything all the time. But like <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a shift that takes place in a rider, and I think you can see it from the sidelines where it's like I'm the guy. And, you know, I think uh, – Hayden has probably been trying to make that shift and like wanting to, that to happen, but bad starts, you know, crashes that like, it's, it's always been something that's like kind of stopped him from like being the man and this championship, like he's the man. So it's like, it's hit that tipping point. So now, you know, based off your own experience, I'm wondering, I'm like, is this a wrap? Like, is this just now that, Diggs is the dude for the next three years until he goes up on a 450. Well, I, he, okay. So I, I, the way I look at it is, is I, I feel like he wanted to do what he's doing now in Supercross, but being that we only have one gate drop in Supercross and, and, uh, tracks are, it just, the, the, everything's different in Supercross than it is motocross. I feel like, um, to your point of, of, of kind of making that statement of, of, you know, kind of coming out of, not out of his shell, but, but, uh, making the statement of, of I'm here to stay. I, I outdoors is the place to do that. Obviously all mm. these kids develop and, and spend most of their lives racing outdoors. So being in Hayden's position, like I feel like, yes, did he want to win supercross? Did he, did he give it hell to win supercross? Yes, he did. But there's, there's just a, you have, your mental game in supercross has to be so much stronger. Mm. Um, uh, that's just what supercross brings to the table. But I feel like outdoors is, this is what he was waiting for. I think his fitness is there. Um, he did come into supercross with a, with a bum wrist, um, and kind of rode, rode through that in, in the beginning of the season, but outdoors being that there's two gate drops, it's 35 minutes. It's who's, who's the toughest, who can suffer the most. Um, I, and I think that's, like I said, I think that's where Hayden has is one up on these guys is, he knows he can suffer. He knows he's fit. No, he's also, he knows he's on one of the best bikes. Um, and he, he almost was waiting for this outdoors. I feel like right to, to establish himself, um, as, as, as the guy in the 250 class, uh, and outdoors can bring that out, uh, in a lot of guys. And I felt like that too. Supergrass to me. And when I, when I first turned pro was, um, foreign to me because I'd never raced in major stadiums, you know, mm. that many races in a row, uh, there's a lot of things that can happen. Tracks narrow, tracks are gnarly. You know, there's just, it's a different scenario where outdoors it's like, okay, this is home to me. I can mm. really let this thing hang out. I can, I, I, uh, I, I grew up doing this and everybody has all these amateurs that have come up in pro where I was watching Tom Bielt, um, go down on the inside of, uh, one of the turns up against Hayden. Um, 
you know, I, I feel like outdoors, this is exactly what he was waiting for is, is to really put his name and stamp on everything that, that he's shown and done. He's been able to do it three weeks in a row. Um, and I feel like the confidence that he's building up, has built up until this point, it's only going to get stronger uh, because he, he, he's, he's, he's here to stay. I, I, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting and, and phenomenal to see. And <laughs> what about the, I guess the, the smack talk as well, you know, like it's so, it's so rare, especially in the 250 class, uh, to have a guy that's this comfortable this early to talk essentially. And it's like, and to back it up, that has got to add insult to injury when you're Tom BL, like Tom wants no part of it, you know, like in he, anytime he gets asked about it at press conferences or interviews, like he just, He's trying to stay out of it. And it's like, I just, I don't know if that can even work. You know, like, I just think as long as you've got Hayden out front, like you gave it to Levi at the press conference, then he's talking about to Tom, you know, like anyone wants it, anyone can get it. And he's backing it up with the writing, you know? So it's, uh, I think we're, we're seeing something special on the bike, but also off the bike because the, there's just not many guys at this age that have a willingness to put themselves out there in that, in that way, you know? Yeah. And I, look, it only works. It only works when you come back when it up win. and <laughs> yeah. exactly it, it does, you know, it only works. And, and Hayden's been able to do that every, um, every, you know, criticism, you know, all the criticism that he's had. Um, and, and, and some of it's been brought on to himself because of, because of how outspoken he is. Um, and it, but it works when you win. Um, but I also, you know, I think it's also growing pains too. The kid's young, the kid's, you know, making a boatload of money right now. He's winning races. He's doing everything that he's, he's supposed to do. Um, so it works when it, when it doesn't, when it stops working is when you stop winning and you still have that mentality. Um, mm. you know, uh, that's, that's when it can bite you. Right. So as of right now, yeah. Is he, is he, uh, is he one of the more cocky ones out there? He is, but he's backing it up. And, and right now, He's sitting in the in the in, in the driver's seat in the two fifty class, and and uh, re he really couldn't ask for for any more at this point. You know, he's he's delivered on on all levels. Yeah, and I and I like it honestly. I mean, obviously doing doing what I do, it's great mm -hmm. to have you know the storylines, but I just think very rare for someone in the two fifty class. You know, I think it takes a long time to establish yourself have enough money in the bank <laughs> to, you yeah. know, to, to be good. You're the 450 guy, you can kind of start to take a bit more of your own, um, speak for yourself a little bit more, but he's just got it straight away. And I just think it's so cool um, that there's actually a 250 rider that's like, that's just down in this way to, to kind of let it, let it fly in the way that, in the way that he does. Like no shirt on the podium last week. Like he made a point, <laughs> he made a point to take his shirt off twice for the podium. Yeah. Not mad at it. Yep. Yep. No, it's, 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 uh, we need those characters in the sport. We don't want to live inside of a box. Um, like I did, uh, you know, call it 10 years ago. So we're going to take a move and, and we're just going to touch real briefly on Tom. Um, you know, definitely, uh, we have some replay of him and Hayden not coming together, but, but Tom going down on the inside of the turn. Um, I'm right here. We're watching this. I feel like he should have went harder. Yeah. Hayden's a type yeah. of guy you need to go harder with. Yeah, um, yeah. I think if he would have just got another, call it 24 inches up forward yeah. on him, Hayden would have not been able to, uh, you know, hold his line inside of that inside, yeah. um, and, and pushed him out, you know, it wouldn't have been dirty by no means. It would have been controlling the line. Um, you know, but it, it didn't happen. He, he was a little too nice and, and came in there and, and slid out. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it, yeah, right here, if he would have just, put himself in a position just a little farther forward. Yeah. Um, you know, Hayden would have had to redirect and go outside. Uh, and that would have maybe been Tom's chance, but uh, he was too nice, too nice right there. And it cost him big time. So he was yeah, another I one think... that, that was, was good on the weekend, but not, not um, probably not where, where himself KTM, you know, really wanted him to be. I think that, um, yeah, I completely agree. Like, way too nice. Like, you're both out front. It's the moto's almost over. You can take Hayden down, and he's still going to get second. 
you know, like you're kind of in one of those positions where it's not like you take him down, you're going to cost him 10 positions and a bunch of points and it turns into like a bad deal, you know, like he mm. goes in here, he puts Hayden down. That's a clear moto victory for Tom with no chance of, you know, him coming back at him and no massive loss for Hayden either. You know, yeah. I, I wonder whether, I mean, probably a better question for you, but I wonder whether sometimes that's in your mind, like, if I take this dude down and he loses all these spots, like it just creates a whole thing that I don't want to deal with, you know, but I in think that situation he's like, well, I could have just cleaned him out three point swing, no big deal. And then we go into moto two. Exactly. I think, I think uh, if you had to ask, um, ask me like, yeah, does he want to deal with that? I don't think he wants to deal with maybe the wrath of, mm. of, of, of Hayden, you know, like starting something, um, that's going to bleed as the series goes on. You know, you kind of want to, um, you know, you keep your, you, you try not to cause, um, don't poke the bear. Don't poke it. Yeah. Don't poke the bear because eventually it's going to come back to, to bite you. That, that to me is a little bit of Hayden's mentality. Like, Oh, you screw with me. I'm going to screw with you the rest of the series, not just one race. Yeah. Um, and it's a tough spot to be in. Um, I, you know, I can go back. Jason Lawrence was kind of a person like that, right? Like you didn't want to, you know, screw with him too much because then um, it just starts to bleed into other races and not just that weekend. It goes into, you know, round four, round five, round six, and you're, and, and then you're kind of always watching your back. So I kind of, a uh, I agree with, with, with that statement, but I also think that specific um, turn and how they were racing it was a fair game to go in there he should have mm. stuffed it in there a bit harder if they came together they came together whatever was going to happen was going to happen um but he was a little too nice and it caused him to uh, and ultimately end up going down um you know and they really didn't even touch it was just he, i feel like he was on the brakes too hard trying to avoid contact mm. with hayden and, and and he and he slid out on his own so yeah, and um, I think I think Tom would have definitely been a rider that that benefited heavily from a rougher track. Like mm. if it was if it was a more traditional Colorado, I think he would have been able to stick with Hayden um, a lot more. And High Point will be interesting for that, you know. Like maybe the most like they're probably the most Euro tracks on the yep. on the circuit, but Colorado didn't get as Euro. Probably no. got like free practice one Euro rough uh, this weekend. Yep, I agree. And we, you know, never know. You start heading back east, you get the you get the the weather that can really play an effect. But um, dude, I gotta move on to Chance Hymas. What a yeah. stellar ride from from the rookie. Um, especially in Moto Two. We're watching a very ups inside gate here. You got Hayden next to him and God he Chance committed to that start. Yeah, he did. He did. And dude, I'll be honest, nobody could touch him in that second moto he mm. was on rails he, i was what i was seeing and watching was his 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 is just the continuous speed that he had everywhere was yeah. one or two miles an hour through the turns through the set all the sections like he was we got hunter and jet watching that watching was cool chase when his first um yep yeah, and, and chance's mom right there in the pink hat um you can see him going past mechanics area solidifying his first uh first um 250 moto win here at Colorado. Um, but what I watched was the speed that he had. He was two to three miles an hour faster everywhere. An easy speed. Yes, he did it easily. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what's to come at the, you know, at high point and the rest of this pro motocross series, because I, I you know, if you go off of that, I, I, I will say it. I feel like the kid found, found something, found himself. The bike's working well, um, but I was very impressed with his lines, the amount of speed he was carrying on the outsides, but easily he did it mm. without mistake. He did it without any, any um, big moments. Um, it just, it, it was like, honestly, poetry in motion is, is what it looked like for him in the second moto. So I want to ask you what your first moto win does for your mentality. Like, do you remember your first moto win and, and how you felt after it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, a little bit, but I can, but it, it mentally, it does a lot for you mentally. It does. It, it's huge gains. Um, you know, knowing that you can win a race, but haven't done it yet is, is, is sometimes tough. And then also 
going through Supercross, not really having uh, a stellar season. Um, and we know he's dealt with some uh, knee injury in the past. Um, he's had some ups and downs. It hasn't been an easy road for him to get to where he's at today. Um, but, you know, it sucks going to the races. I know I can win. I know I can win, but just never winning, you know. And luckily, I was never in that spot. But there is there's times that that uh, I can go back to, I think it was 2011, where I won a fair amount of first motos, but I couldn't win a second motor to save my life. I just the bike was, was bike was beating me up in the second motos. I couldn't do it. We made a bike change, a, a drastic change before Unadilla. And I went one, one. And then I went, I think I won three or four of the races on, on the way out and with one ones. Um, so it, it really does suck going to the races, knowing that you have the speed and the fitness, but you just can't put it all together. So I think with that first moto win or with that moto win, his first moto win of his, of his career outdoors, I think from the mental game, from the mental side of, of what he's, you know, dealt with now is all the kind of the pressures off. Now a, a, a set of a new pressure becomes to back it up and to, and to, the next goal is to, to, to get an overall, um, to go one, one, you know, whatever you set your, your sights on as a goal, but uh, it's a new set of pressures and it's nice to get rid of the old, right. Get that monkey mm. off your back because after a while there, um, it becomes old to, of hearing like, yeah, I got the speed. I can do this. Um, it's, it's only a matter of time. Well, that sucks to hear after, you know, six, eight months of, of that. And so for him to <clears throat> knock down that first win of his career in the 250 class, now I feel like, okay, chances, chances arrived. Let's see what he can produce and give us, um, you know, in second motos and the races to come. Yeah. And I think, um, his ride's not guaranteed, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like he's in a position where factories move on quick from guys in the 250 class that that can't win races. And they've already got Joe Shimoda, which as far as the lights, you know, 250 class goes, that's he's a high-profile guy, yeah. you know what I mean? He's like a huge fan following, like delivers in Supercross. So pretty important that this year Chance actually does deliver in that way because the, the clock's ticking, you know. And I think, I mean, Parler, I looked at him right and I was like, I'm literally watching Hunter Lawrence. Like, I'm watching Hunter race right now. Then he's on that program. He's been with the boys for a few years now. And I think, I think that the Lawrence program is a program that, unless you jet, it's like a slow compounding. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on technique. Like, don't worry about speed. Speed's going to come soon. Like, trust the process. Like, they're the ultimate trust the process. Like, we're going to move all your levers in. We're going to change all this. We're doing this for a reason. It's going to take years to feel good. But once it does, you're going to have that effortless speed. And, you know, like, that's what BT says this. And when I talk to BT on, like, coaching, it's like going fast is about not slowing down. You know, yep. and, and I think that you can see so many guys that it's like so deep in on the brakes, so much acceleration out. They're just doing a lot. And you see guys, you see Jet, you see Hunter and Chance, they're just not slowing down. You know, yep. they're going fast by just carrying so much momentum. They're always in the right position on the bike. They're always in the right lines on the track. And it just translates to that kind of speed um that you're talking about so breakout ride and i think confidence wise on the starts too i mean i think as far as the platform goes honda's probably the slower of the 250s um, yeah so for him to rip that start uphill at elevation he's a bigger guy they call him super chunk you know so i think even just the the starts that's going to give him um a bunch of confidence and like I mean, you watch that start, like he just committed out the jump, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. So great job on, uh, great job for chance. I think we have some really good things to come from him. Um, just we'll touch on Levi really quick. Uh, definitely not the week that Levi or pro circuit wanted. Um, you know, let's, we'll pull those points up really quick. Hector, one more time. Um, don't have memorized just yet, but yeah, we're got yeah, he's, he's a moto points. down. He's a moto down, man, and uh, that's that's going to be a tough spot to to come back from. Um, you know the inconsistencies of showing up on the weekend and at a 
I don't want to say hundred percent, but just like you have to show up every weekend. And uh, he felt a little off at Hangtown. He, we, we heard that in the broadcast um, this week. Wasn't uh, this weekend at Colorado wasn't a weekend that uh, himself or the team wanted. And uh, he's definitely got to definitely has to figure something out if he wants to keep this thing alive. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's crazy looking at the points, the way that you broke it down, like the hole that you can get yourself into early right away in a, in a like early, real early three rounds mm -hmm. in early. I haven't even gone East yet. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess not, not uh, time to hit the panic buttons, but I think it really becomes, <laughs> really becomes important to like really execute um, across the board. But I mean, I don't like, was it just starts this weekend? I mean, uh, he passed chance early in the first moto. So it's not like the starts were terrible, but obviously just like not enough speed to kind of run that pace and stay in touch with those guys. And then, you kind of get 20 minutes into a moto, you start fatiguing a little bit, the brain's, you know, not as switched on and just that intensity, you know, maybe it was just he didn't have the intensity to, to really try and um, keep rolling with those front boys. Yeah, yeah, he definitely has to go back to the drawing board and, and uh, you know, resurface himself as as one of these riders, as, you know, as one of the top riders, which I know he still is, but I'm just saying he's 25 points down. That's a lot of points by, by round three already. And, uh, so, you know, I'm hoping to see, I'm hoping to see another one back up in the mix, right? Like get Levi back up there and, uh, have this thing, a three or four race rider race to, to the finish. But, um, but yeah, that was, uh, he definitely needs to do something different. So we'll move on to, uh, this week on motorsports on NBC. Hector, let's run that for us. We have uh, 2 PM Eastern SMX insider with Jason Wagon and, uh, Jason Thomas Sunday, 10 Eastern pro motocross. Uh, race day live qualifying one um, Eastern 1 p.m. Eastern time pro motocross high point get to get on there and watch that uh, 3 p.m. Eastern NASCAR Xfinity series Iowa Speedway so that should be a good one and uh, Sunday 3 p.m. Eastern pro motocross high point there we go and 6 p.m. 6 30 p.m. Eastern NASCAR Cup Series Iowa Speedway so there's a lot to watch this weekend on uh, Peacock YouTube um for all you race fans that uh are into the four wheel into the two wheel i'm actually yeah, that's a shane van gisbergen this weekend he uh yeah he he won in the in the nascar so awesome. we'll, claim yeah. we'll claim him as an aussie he's, he's older, <laughs> but we'll claim him. yeah yeah totally i'm actually sitting up in uh, vancouver washington right now for the yamaha 2025 photo shoot here at washougal so i'll be up here till friday so that's why i'm remote in my hotel room right now um we're going to just jump down to, let's see right here. We have a quad lock question of the week and we should be wrapping this up here pretty quick. Quad lock question of the week. So thank you guys. Caitlin Carver in motocross. Do you know what gear you are in at all times or is it just a feel and listening to the RPM thing? From example, good at question. Hangtown. Yeah. Good question. From, for example, at Hangtown, when Deegan went down and jumped back up, he never downshifted. Is there no risk of choking the bike down? uh yeah so question. yeah it is a good question so thank you catlin get caitlin get over to uh dm us over at title 24 curly will get you hooked up with uh with all the quad lock uh equipment so thank you to quad lock for that they have some of the best uh phone cases chargers cord accessories everything you guys need um so get over there dm us and curly will get you uh get you all set up but no i think um in our position uh, on the level and scale of racing that we do, uh, no, you don't. You don't really know. I mean, I, I've heard of guys out there that, yeah, kind of know, uh, yeah, I'm in second or I'm in third or I'm hitting that jump in fourth. Um, I think the time that you really figure out what gear you're in is when you're unsure of, of like, say, the size of a triple or the size of a jump. You know, you want to make sure – um, that you're in the right gear, mm. but a lot of that has to do with the vibration of the motorcycle, um, the RPM with hearing, uh, with, you know, that hearing is a major sense of, of what we, you know, when it's time to shift, um, you know, and things like that. So, uh, you know, to really be able to, unless I went down the line and asked guys, I doubt they know what gear they're in. We definitely know what gear we're in on the starting line, especially Colorado, for example, um, don't know if they still do it, but I do know that when I was racing 250 and 450, we would start in first gear. 
And yeah, I'm made pretty a sure point. a lot of the guys were starting yeah. first this weekend. Yeah, because of the altitude, because of how much the bike's down on power, that is one thing that when we go to the line, either your mechanic reminds you, um, and that's something that you're running through your head to remind yourself, like, hey, I'm starting in first gear today, because yeah. that is the only track um, and racing scenario that you ever start in first gear on any one of these motorcycles. But once you leave the gate and you're out on the track, it's feel and it's what you can hear out of the, you know, the, the, the what the bike's giving you for the RPMs, you know, so uh, it comes down to just that, that six set, you know, that six sense that you have of to shift up, to shift down um, in, in what gears. And, and to be honest, we're only using, we're only using, we're using from second to fourth most times, right? Like we're, we're very rarely are we in fifth gear on these motorcycles, you know, there's really just not a straightaway long enough to get to the fifth gear. So you're really only go juggling from second to fourth. So, um, you know, especially on a 450. but yeah, great question, Caitlin, like I said, get over, send, uh, send over your info over to the title 24 Instagram and, and, uh, JH will get you, uh, get you handled there. So, uh, Jace, thanks for coming on, dude. Like, Hey, what's yeah, your initial, no before we wrap up, what's your initial thoughts on high point? What are you, uh, what are you looking for? Um, to be honest, I'm kind of, I'm kind of hoping for, I don't want a mud race, but I want a little bit of weather um, yeah. to, to make that track technical. High point is to your point, like you just said, kind of more of a Euro style. It, it can get some very long, ruddy technical sections and it might, it might shake up some things. First of all, I'm just bummed Ken Roxon won't be there. Uh, that was one. Of, that was one of the. That was one of the best cameos uh, that we had last year. Um, but yeah, I think first of all, it's like that's the country club. You know, it's the motorcross yeah. country club. So I'm just excited to. I just love that place in terms of it's a, a brilliant spectator venue. Um, if you're in that area and you can go to the race, like that's one of the races I would 100% recommend um, going to see in person. I'm looking forward to seeing if we're going to see any like big sections you know there, mm. there's a couple of like there's a couple of jumps that aren't jumps that the guys can make jumps um i always get excited for that at high point um and yeah just i'm interested to see how the track develops and who that like whose strength that kind of plays into and also like i really want to see hunter get it overall i mean yeah he's got a he's got a points lead and overall for Hunter right now would be massive, you know, to go into round five. If he got the points lead, he would extend the the championship lead. So, I mean, I I kind of want to see that. And then I think the storyline is, like, is Deegan the man? Yeah. You know, like, he's perfect so far in terms of overalls. We might be seeing the breakout year from Hayden that we've kind of, you know, you look at, like, a Minio's performance from back in the day this is this is like that version of of hayden so it's like is he getting into that amateur headspace where he just every time he went to the line he knew he was gonna win the motos so yep yeah no i agree it's gonna be very interesting to see it looks like we're got we have mostly sunny high of 84 so we're gonna have some really good weather in that place that place can be a scorcher the humidity can be high but it looks like we're we're at this point. Um, I know it's early, um, but we're gonna we're gonna have some good weather for racing. So, where, where um, did High Point rate for you as one of your favorite or least favorite tracks? Um, I liked High Point. I did. They so they've changed the track a lot since um, mm. since I used to race it. Um, it used to be a little more. Uh, I should say a lot more technical, a little slower. It didn't go from one end to the other down that big big ravine. Um, it, it started to change itself up. I think Mark Peters came out right towards the end of my career and, and started to make it a bit faster, a bit more open. Um, but just with the dirt, the way it is, the quality of the dirt, like it's really tacky in spots, but it also has that, um, the clay the base. Hard base. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a clay base too. It's not like a dry, slick California, um, hard base. It's a, it's, it's a back East slimy clayish uh, you know, feel. So it's, it's, uh, bike setups key tire selection is very key. You know, it'll be very interesting to see who runs the scoop tire for practice. Cause it, you tend to do that in practice for obviously lap time, which is your gate pick. Um, but then as the day goes on, 
and the track dries out, I, I'm, I'm presuming that everybody will go back to a standard, um, a standard motocross tire, not the scoop. And, um, you know, that it, it'll be interesting to see, like I said, it, it, I'm hoping that we have a technical, um, track. So it, we, we, so show some strengths and weaknesses of, of some other riders. Um, and it may change up the, the, you know, the overall result. So, um, that's what I'm looking forward to. So, Hey guys, I just want to say thank you to Dunlop, um, you know, for the for Dunlop quad lock United motorsports and, uh, um, Boxo Tools sponsors of the show, so thank you guys. And uh, hey, if you guys are you know looking to find out where to listen to us, you can get the audio version of the podcast available anywhere you download your favorite podcast. Video version is available on Motorsports on NBC YouTube page and on Peacock. So pretty much get us anywhere you guys listen or download or watch um, you know podcasts and and uh, get the insight of uh, Colorado. But uh, I just want to say thanks to Jace and Gypsy Tales for coming on the show, being a step in. Um, It was awesome. It's always a good time having you on here, and uh, we'll have to do it again. Anytime, boys. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.